Isotropics released a new version of Clarice today. So a new early access build. So this is gonna be your Angie. And with that comes a lot of new changes that are super exciting and are definitely going to be something that you're gonna to wanna to take a look at. So to start off here, the kind of big things are with the textures. So the textures are automatically going to be converted to TX files. We no longer have to create those ourselves. So a little optimization there. There's also some settings that go along with that. So if we go up to our preferences and we take a look at the input output here, you see we have some different texture caches. You can set the limit on the texture cache size, which is super useful. And you can also clear them out just through here which you're going to want to do occasionally, but it's automatically going to delete out the old ones, I believe, once it starts hitting this limit. I think that's something that I saw. And you can also go down to your Angie down here and set the GPU texture cache limit. You can also clear that out. You can also come up and set your default hardware device, which you're probably going to want to set to GPU just so it's faster. And CPU actually is pretty quick compared to regular Clarice in this as well, but I would definitely recommend GPU if you have it available and you have enough RAM, VRAM to do so. Now, the other big thing that you're going to want to take a look at is the normal maps, the clip maps, and the opacity maps. So they're all stuff that is supported now inside of this second release, which was missing from the first one and was kind of the major limiting factor, at least in my opinion, for the first release of Angie. Can't really do a whole lot without those uh, opacity maps and specifically the, the normal maps is kind of the biggest one. Obviously, Angie and our Clarice in general, you can do unlimited polygons, but most of your models are gonna be set up with their textures and not just a ton of polygons. So let's take a look at that real quick. So I'm gonna disable this displacement, gets rid of that. And then if I come into our texture here, our, our material, I can go ahead and just disconnect that texture. And you see that we have our normal map working inside of Clarice, which is awesome. So let's go ahead, take a look at the download area here. So a couple of things to note, there is a new thing here, which is going to be some scenes that you can take a look at, which we'll look add a couple of them here in a second, but some scenes to get you up and running with Angie. Just take a look at how to do some different things. Pretty useful stuff there. If you go into the documentation, sorry, not the documentation, but the installs come down to the early access too. You can take a look at the release notes here. So we'll take a look at those here. Like I said, opacity and clip maps are not now supported well as automatic TX file management, which is pretty sick. Got your texture caches. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. Uh, motion blur is now enabled in both CPU and GPU. And that is going to be big for any sort of animations that you're doing. So definitely something that you wanna, you wanna enable there. And there's a bunch of other things here, some stuff with the different OSL texture mapping and different things there. There's a very good presentation that they did today that I would definitely recommend taking a look through so you can see all the different things as well as taking a read through this. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different projects that you get. So we'll do the sky project here. There's two of these that we'll take a look at and they are pretty sweet. So you get all these different VDBs. If you wanna just test out some render times, you can go through and kind of break these apart, but you can also just test your render, um, the render speed of these different scenes to see how your system will fare in Angie. See, this is at 81%, that's where I stopped it at. And it only took a, a couple minutes to get here. And this is a ton of VDBs. So definitely something that I'm looking forward to doing some more with. And there's some really good stuff in here with the different VDBs on how to get them to look super good because these look amazing. Moving on here, we do have this Rolex watch. So this rendered super, super quick. Uh, as you can see, it cleans up really, really well. Different IOR and uh, the opacity maps here with your, your glass and, and stuff that's going on. So definitely take a look, break this down. 
and you can see how they went about making these. You can see the different settings as well in there. We also have the Mustang project, which I didn't let render very much. Let's go ahead and just kind of start this up and you can see how quickly it cleans up on my GPU. I am using a 3090, so pretty powerful here. But as you can see, it's starting to kind of weed out some of this noise, obviously with it being heavy on the different glass textures, lots of reflections and refractions going on. So there's going to be a lot of noise to start out, but you can see the glass is actually cleaning up pretty, pretty quickly here. And once it kind of gets past this initial couple of percentage uh, points of, of render, gets a little bit closer, it actually starts to speed up quite a bit, kind of stops rendering the stuff once it hits this noise threshold that you have set with the other parts of the scene, kind of focuses where it needs the samples going, which is pretty sick. But you can see just in the, the short amount of time that I've been talking here, it has cleaned up quite a bit. You let this run, but we'll go ahead and just pause that for now and move on to the next scene here, which is the last one that we're gonna take a look at. This one is very, very pretty. We got a bunch more VDBs going on. So this is the second VDB pack um, that comes along inside of this download area. So in these little zip file, you'll get a bunch of scenes. You can break, break these down, see how they made it. Now this one is something that I would definitely recommend taking a look at. I hear a lot of people complaining about how there's no physical sky inside of Clarice and it's hard to get good lighting inside of Clarice. And this is a great demonstration on how you can get some uh, really nice looking skies going on. And you can use this type of a technique to actually render out some backdrops for your scenes if you want to uh, go about doing that. And they render out pretty quick here, so I stopped this at 62%. Let's go ahead, we'll restart this one as well. You can see just how quickly this cleans up on my system here. So obviously very noisy to start out with, but once it gets going, it starts to really clean up really, really well here. Like I said, I would definitely recommend going and downloading all these files, really break them apart, grab these VDBs and play with them in your own scenes and just kind of rip everything apart, learn how that they went about making these example files for you guys and uh, see, see what they did to get these looking good. Now I didn't take a look at the opacity clip maps on things like Speedtree uh, assets, but definitely something that you can do if you're holding off on using Angie until you got the ability to use your Speedtree assets as something that you can definitely do now. That is one of the things that really held me back from from jumping in super hard into Angie. So as I have time here, I'm probably going to be taking a lot deeper look into, into this, but it is looking pretty sweet for the future. And they are pushing out uh, the progress on this pretty quick. So I'm excited to see how quickly they get this to a final stable release that you guys can actually uh, use for your scenes, for your, your final image that is going to be production ready at least. Now, I would definitely say that this is at a point now where it is something that you could use for a production workflow, at least for certain things. Uh, definitely wasn't before, not with the limited uh, limitations on your normal maps and your, your opacity maps, but definitely take a look at the the where is it at there's some limitations maybe it's on there angie i think if we just type in angie here ah, i don't remember where it's at but there is a, an angie page that has the different limitations on the scenes here so oh right here we can go to the known limitations and you see all the different limitations that are now in here. It actually doesn't look like this has been updated actually. Um, so I'll take a, take a look through this here in a couple days or maybe they just forgot to uh, update the, the change date, but definitely some things that are not 
in Angie yet, but there are a lot of things in here now that we're limiting it before. So take a look at it, download it. I think you guys can play with it for free through the PLE right now. So take advantage of that for sure. Um, but anyways, hopefully this is exciting for you guys. It's definitely something that I like to see with new render engines popping up or new um, updates to render engines, I should say, popping up because Obviously, we have our main ones that we use inside of our applications, but these different ones that are kind of considered niche could now become more viable, especially when they're pushing towards GPU. So you can use them for your your projects uh, without having to use a render or a render farm. But anyways, I. I have a bunch of other videos on Clarice, so if you want to learn more about Clarice, take a look at those. I also have some stuff on Houdini and Redshift if you're interested in any of that. Also some stuff on Octane and Cinema 4D as well, so take a look at that if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.